my name's Mad Matt Lugos and welcome to the Asari Romance Simulator. What? What do you mean we're going to Andromeda? Well, alright, I mean, how close is that to Thessia? Yeah. Yeah. Another galaxy? Oh man. All right, welcome to Mass Effect Andromeda, everyone. So if you've never watched one of my playthroughs before, I like to play single player, story focused games where we can take our time, explore, go a bit slower, focus on the story, the characters, the lore, and all that good stuff. So if I sound like someone you wanna maybe come along on another deep space adventure with, and I hope you join me for Mass Effect Andromeda. So, if you haven't already, maybe go check out my playthrough of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition that I did in autumn of last year. I had a fab fabulous time with the remastered trilogy. It was my first time playing it. It was a series that I, I missed back at the uh, back at its original release date and. I had a wonderful experience um, seeing Shepard's journey. Uh, but one big question that I had, roughly about two-thirds of my way through the Legendary Edition, was whether I should actually play Mass Effect Andromeda, because I know it kind of maybe divides opinion. It's not thought of on the same kind of level or scope as the original games. It's more of a spin-off, has some elements that we... that that aren't as good as the originals. So uh, I am still excited. I've had a nice break. I've been playing other games. Uh, so it's been, how long has it been now? Maybe two to three months, I think, since I finished Mass Effect 3. So it's, it's a nice break. I, I've still got good memories of of the original trilogy, but I'm, I'm, I'm not holding this to the same standards so um i'm following all the advice that you guys gave me which is basically the um don't don't have the the, the kind of expectations from the original trilogy go into this uh thinking of it as its own thing and maybe don't be a completionist with andromeda because there are a lot of kind of grindy style side quests so what i need to ask you guys to do as i'm going through the playthrough is just to be my guide when quests show up um i'm happy for you to just tell me yeah i just avoid this matt um or this is an important like story quest it'll be we have a really interesting storyline maybe check this quest out and i'm sure i'll get an idea of that myself as i go through but basically um before I do a playthrough, I like to check uh, the website how long to beat to just to get an idea of how long a playthrough might be. And the numbers for this are quite scary. Um, so I'm hoping to have a playthrough that's somewhere between 25 to 40 hours, basically, where we don't do a lot of the the kind of fillery kind of content and we just stick to kind of the good story bits so that I get the the kind of the most positive experience through this game as possible so yeah um a collaborative effort with you guys if you could guide me in a non-spoilery way through what quests I should be doing what I should avoid and then this game doesn't end up this this playthrough even doesn't end up being a bit too bloated uh, in terms of my schedule um, the videos for this are going to be very long, but there's only going to be one video a day. So like when I did the original Mass Effect trilogy, it was like two videos a day, but each were like an hour long. Whereas I'm just going to do one video that's two, uh, two and a bit hours long. So it's, it's the same amount of content. It's just in one video. It just means I don't have to do two uploads, two thumbnails, two of everything. Uh, but I'm, I'm just trying this out basically. So we'll see how that goes. Right. In terms of who we're going to be playing as. So we're going to be playing as either Scott or Sarah Ryder. Now, obviously, I played as female Shepherd in the Legendary Edition, uh, and I have decided I'm going to be playing as female Ryder as well. Um, after, after messing around in the character creator for like an hour, 
um the male the the male character creator is really awkward to get looking right the eyebrows are like huge the eyebrows are like double deckers you know like the the chocolate bar <laughs> they're huge but um i thought what i didn't realize that both the both scott and sarah Ryder were actually in the game themselves they're their brother their brother and sister they're twins and um, so what, I, what I, I thought then is well i tried to start thinking of any iconic brother and sister duos from science fiction that i could maybe model our characters on and uh considering you know uh the original games uh, i i I was a bit unsure at first whether it'd be okay to, to play as, 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 a, as a black female character. I ended up doing that. I had, um, and I, I got I got like one like really, really over the top, like hateful comment about that that they later deleted, basically accusing me. <laughs> I, I won't go into that, but in light of that, I'm going to do it again. So if you guys have watched, um, if you guys are familiar with Altered Carbon, the cyberpunk uh, dystopian sci-fi uh, books in the show. I've not read the books. I've, I've watched some of the show. Um, there's a brother and sister pairing kind of at the center of that story, Tak and Ray, Raylene and uh, Takashi. Um, so I've based my two riders on them, and we're going to be playing as, as the female one. Uh, I've had to change their hair slightly because there's not very good hair options in the character creator. I did look at downloading some mods, um, but I, I don't know. A lot of them seemed kind of a bit off the mods, so uh, not. I don't think that the modding scene for this is quite as deep as, as some other games. So uh, I've only loaded. I've only seen the uh, beginning intro cinematic. Long intros as usual, Matt. But we've got to do it. Uh, so we're going to be starting a new game. I'm going to be creating a, a custom character. The only thing, uh, one specific question I want to ask you guys after we get into the game. Uh, the field of view, um, you can change it quite drastically. I like a, a bit of a wider field of view in a third person game. I've got it set to about 75%, so it's quite pulled back. Please let me know if you think it looks a bit weird, if it doesn't look right. And we'll, I'll, I'll tweak that as we go through the episodes to get it right. Whether we want it drawn all the way out or a little bit closer, uh, we'll, uh, we'll find out. But we're going to get started with a custom character. I've already made my uh, Scott and Sarah. Sarah. Is it Sarah or Sarah? I don't know. But uh, the advice that you guys gave me was to keep the default first names because they'll be used in dialogue, in cutscenes and stuff, which... You know makes things feel a bit more personal so um i'm gonna be sticking with the default names even though it would be nice to to have custom ones okay so these are the default ones so uh we're going to import some characters here that i had to log into the website to do which i wasn't necessarily happy about uh, we're going to pick custom uh, so I've, obviously i'll show you some pictures here Okay, yeah, so we've got got Ray and Tark from Altered Carbon, okay? Um, now, obviously, the hair is a bit different. Um, Ray's hair, she has kind of like a bit of a, bl a bit of a, a blonde eye on the on the top of black roots. But the blonde hair in in this game is like fluorescent. It's like it just it does not look right. I mean, if you look at the uh, the blonde hair, it's it's just way too bright. It's it, the 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 texture of it just looks completely completely wrong. It just looks way too saturated. Even when you come down here, like I just I can't get it looking right. So what I've decided to do is to go for like a textured black. So this is just it's like a slate black, is what I decided here. Um, so it gives it like a uh, you can see it a bit of textures but if it was like matte, if it was completely black it looks kind of doesn't have the, the depth to it <laughs> look at look at listen to the bald guy talking about hair texture right um so i think this looks quite nice and i've, I've put the same on uh takeshi 
Um, and I, I wanted to have a tied up hairstyle, but they all look a bit weird, to be honest. And th 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 this is the nicest compromise, I think. Light on the makeup, no tattoos or scars. Um, and class wise, you guys told me that the combat is really fun in this game. And because I played as an engineer in the Legendary Edition, um, we're going the kind of the opposite way now. I want to be like heavy melee just in the face maybe shotguns just wreaking havoc style um, and history obviously we want female shepherd as our history dear amanita not whoever that was on there <laughs> right so um yeah i'm pretty happy about that um it took me a long time to get tuck here to get scott looking even a bit similar to how he looks in the TV show. And I've based it, obviously, in the TV show, if you're familiar with Altered Carbon, uh, Takashi, uh, Takeshi Kovach has, they're called sleeves, they have different bodies, so he, he occupies like four different people, and I, and I wanted to base him on who his original body was in the show, not people he was re-sleeved into and that's as close as i could get like sort of medium length hair there with the kind of slate black but i think we look really good um i quite liked it in the opening cutscene anyway that's enough chatting on it's uh, i mean mass effect's all about talking and dialogue you've got to do a long intro so yeah we've gone for biotic i don't think there's anything else i can customize um and oh yeah and this uh, our father apparently is going to be somewhere so choose the appearance of your father, Alec Ryder. His appearance can either adapt to your player's customization or remain as the default version. With this, op with this option on, Alec Ryder's appearance will be based on your customized rider. Setting this off, we'll use Alec Ryder's default appearance. So <laughs> I don't know how he's going to look now. He might look end up looking ridiculous. But, um... Yeah, so I think this looks enough like, like Ray. Um, it's just the hair looks a bit different, but that's what we're going with. Okay, now we're going to play on hardcore. I don't know, actually. Yeah, normal's the baseline, so we're going to go for hardcore. Let's do it. Feels weird being back. In this in this universe right but obviously we're nowhere near so much of the stuff from the original games so let's go leave me alone ea this is bioware no ea every great moment in our history began with a dream each bold leap forward was achieved by those willing to do anything to attain it. We are, all of us, leaving behind families, homes, the very birthplace of our species. Some for discovery, to see the unknown, others for a new start. But today, whatever our reasons, we take the first steps toward a new future for humanity. Today, we begin to make our dream reality. In the year 2185, humanity lives in a golden era of interstellar travel. Our discovery of an ancient alien ruins on Mars propelled our understanding of science and technology ahead by thousands of years. While many now enjoy the newfound freedom and challenges of exploration in the Milky Way, others look e to even more distant stars. For the 100,000 adventurers embarking on this one-way voyage, the future begins in Andromeda. Now, this is such a great concept, right? Such a great concept. Concept. C. 
634 years later, that is mad. The Reapers are toast. Burnt toast. I'll, I'll stop talking over cutscenes. Arc Hyperion, occupancy 20,000 human colonists. Said that there were a hundred thousand, right? So maybe other races make up the numbers. Tell me we brought some Elcor. Andromeda Galaxy, destination Habitat 7 in the Helios Cluster. Look at this. Hyperion Cryogenics. Cerberus is never mentioned, this game can get a 10 out of 10. We made it. Deep breaths. You're gonna wanna take it easy. I've been taking it easy for 600 years. Ryder, Sarah, Recon Specialist, Pathfinder Mission Team. Pathfinder Team, eh? The ones finding us a home. Can you okay. make it somewhere tropical? Nice, warm ocean? Summer year-round. How about we get her a cup of coffee first? Yes. Immediately. The selection process saw the Andromeda Initiative evaluate thousands of potential habitable planets within the galaxy. Sarah Ryder, let's get you checked out. Look here. After discovering an unusually high ratio oh, no. of potential candidates for Golden Worlds, the Helios Cluster was selected as our destination. Now you are a part of the first wave of Arcs arriving in Andromeda, our new home for humanity. Makes it sound so easy, doesn't it? Okay, so tone choice. Tone choices help define Ryder's personality. So we've got emotional, logical, casual, and professional. So, I haven't I even thought about this. The uh, Paragon Paragade system, is it gone? I'll be glad if it's gone, to be honest. So we've got four choices here, so I don't know if it's a similar sort of system. I've got an Asari already. A doctor. <laughs> okay, so how do I know which one it is? Ah, okay, so... That's casual. This is professional. Um, she's being casual, so let's not uh, let's match her tone. Uh, yeah, if it's easy, it's not going to be any fun, right, Lexi? I hope not. Signed up for a little adventure before we settle down. Well, buckle up. Sounds like you'll get your wish. Yeah. Over here now. The Pathfinder wants you all on your feet right away. He said, mission ready within the hour. Any idea why? No, but I'm guessing that's where your adventure comes in. Okay, everything checks out. Just one more thing before I send you on your way. Let's test your SAM implant. Sam, are you monitoring? Sam, are you online? Yes, Dr. Tapero. Good morning, Sarah. Are you feeling well? Okay, so I've got like a... What the hell was that? Um... Like a neural Im neural implant. So I, 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 I don't know if what is optional here. Uh, what's this implant? I'm guess question if it's a question mark. I'm guessing that's optional. Uh, in terms of where I've placed my face camera, if I'm blocking major parts of the UI, I'll, I'll shift it somewhere else. I just don't know yet. Implant. I just need a second to get my bearings. Oh. What's this about my implant? A routine check. After being in stasis, we want to make sure the connection's still live. As the team's mission computer, your well-being is my primary concern. Assuming the implants work as advertised, Sam sees what you see, in theory. We won't know for sure until we get you in the field. How are you feeling, otherwise? 
Okay, so from what I, I seem to remember you guys telling me this takes place at some point during Mass Effect 2. Uh, sorry, that the mission left at some point during Mass Effect 2. Uh, obviously, I don't know at this point if we have any commun if there if it's even possible to communicate with the Milky Way. Um, I imagine there won't be because they have to invent a story from 600 years later. <laughs> um, but yeah, how am I feeling? Uh, yeah, still still feeling pretty groggy. I feel like a 600 year old popsicle. I hope we pack more coffee. Readings confirmed. Based on the levels of adenosine in your system, the neural implant is functioning properly. Wait, adeno what? It just means you're still shaking off your nap. No reason why we can't get you on your way. Though you may want to hang around while we revive your brother. It always helps to see a familiar face. I don't like the sound of that. Is this stuff almost looks like tree vines? Okay, the gravity's gone. What's, What's happening? It broke free. Just hang on. Engineering, report. Try to yeah, brace yourself. Gravity crowd is offline. Oh, careful of the I'm on the side. Hold on. This is Cora. I'm at the cryo bay. Brace for a reset. <sighs> Everyone okay? I think so. What happened? We're not sure. Sensors are scrambled. But it's good to see you're up. Feels like centuries since we spoke. This is the Pathfinder. Mission teams continue preparations. Cora, riders, report to the bridge. You heard him. Let's get. Uh, we have a problem over here. It's Scott Ryder. Okay, so I don't know. Have to check it out. This is as far as I saw up to. I just wanted to load in to see how my character looked in the cutscenes. Let's go see if our brother's just gonna get killed off here. I'm running a diagnostic now. Give it a second. The processor is I guess he's gonna be in the game if we had to design his character, right? Sarah, is my brother okay? Scott's fine. His vitals are strong. But the revival procedure was interrupted. Well... I really don't want to lose him. I don't like the sound of that. Don't worry. It just means the process could take a bit longer than usual. Sam? My connection to Scott's implant was suspended. However, his pulse, respiration and brain activity are all normal. To be on the safe side, we'll need to keep him in a low-level coma for a while. Then let his body regain consciousness naturally. Okay. He'll be fine. Glad to hear it. Thanks, Lexi. Keep us updated. Ryder, I'll wait for you at the door whenever you're ready to go. Okay, Cora. Keep them in the pod for now. Round the clock monitoring. We don't know if they're in true stasis anymore. All oh, right, I am. So parts of the body could be waking up. I am blocking the, the UI. We can't be sure just yet. Alright, guess I'll have to move. Uh, I'm going to be blocking this thing on the other side. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Transform. Flip. There we go. Doctor? Don't worry, Ryder. We'll take care of him. You'll make it. Okay, so this is the field of view at about 75%. And we've got so much stuff to click on. Cryopad. Still in stasis. Vitals look good. That's not Scott, though. Scott's in that one. Yeah, I think, the I think our character looks pretty good. I did spend quite a long time getting them to tr look as close as I could to Ray and Tuck. Nice haircut. It sounds amazing, doesn't it? Right up until you lose gravity. Yeah, I'm glad I, I didn't pick a brighter hair colour. Damage control team to deck three. 
Information Hi, wall. I'm Jan Garson, founder of the Andromeda Initiative. I'm here to welcome you to a whole new galaxy. An if AI? This, the hard part's over. We're here. If you have any questions now, just ask. Oh, there were other arcs. All oh, right, 100,000 people, so each had 20,000 on, I guess. So, what is the Andromeda Initiative? The Andromeda Initiative encompasses all colonization efforts, including arcs, pathfinders, outposts, and the central support hub, the Nexus. The current location of the Nexus is unknown. Status of outposts are ah. unknown. Right. I'm going to have to uh, locate everyone, I guess. The founder? I'm Jean Garson, founder of the initiative. I think it's important we take a moment to reflect on the principles that brought all of us together. It started with a vision of a better future. A vision that you shape. Life in Andromeda can be anything we dare to dream. And I'm proud to help make those dreams come true. Drop me a note sometime. I'd love to hear how we're doing. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, kind of looks like we've landed on Dark Bramble, basically. Uh, so the other arcs, when was the last time we heard from them? Your current location is Mark Hyperion, housing the human population. Ah, right. Archero, the Solarian vessel, confirmed departure in 2185. The Asari ship, Arc Lucinia, confirmed yes. departure that same year, as did the Turian Arc Natanis, embarking in 2185. So Asari, Solarian, Turian, and human, who, that's only 80,000 people, was there a, uh, a fifth one? Okay, so we're going straight to the Asari arc. <laughs> uh, our destination, yeah. The selection process saw the Andromeda Initiative evaluate thousands of potential habitable planets within the galaxy. After discovering an unusually high ratio of potential candidates, or golden worlds, the Helios Cluster was selected as our destination. Right. Now you are a part of the first wave of arcs arriving in Andromeda, our new home for humanity. Once the Pathfinder team's assessment is complete, Habitat 7 has been selected as the most likely candidate for colonization. Uh, who are the Pathfinders? The Pathfinder is responsible for exploring and assessing new worlds for outpost placement and settlement. Ah, the right. is led by a Pathfinder who represents their species. That's their us. The active duty Pathfinder assigned to Ark Hyperion is Alec Ryder. Oh, our Current father. The roster shows you are assigned to the Pathfinder mission team, Specialist Ryder. Okay. Status report. At present, Arc Hyperion has arrived in the Helios Cluster. Further mission updates are offline due to technical difficulties. As recon specialist, you are tasked with supporting the authentication of Golden World sites through exploration, mapping, and scientific analysis. Currently, you are to report for duty on the command bridge. Okay, useful, very useful. Okay, so there's, this is only humans on here, obviously, besides that Asari Doctor and any other kind of specialists. Okay, so we need to go over there. So naturally we're going to go over here first. Grey. Nice and easy. Just take deep breaths. Hey, you've got Commander Shepard's haircut. Mad. So far, so good. How do you feel? Like I've got the world's worst hangover. So one of the reasons why I was really kind of intrigued by this whole... So your name's Lucas Greer? It was when we left. They need you on the Pathfinder mission team. Let's get you ready to go. No, no. Sweet so dreams. has to do with whatever knocked out the gravity. Yeah, one of the reasons why I thought this story was so intriguing, you know, the whole going to a completely unknown place, a small team. So I'm not like a massive Star Trek aficionado or anything, but like growing up, my dad used to watch a lot of uh, Voyager, you know, with Captain Janeway. And they're, they they're, they were kind of stuck, right, on, on an uncharted part of space. So I'm just kind of getting that feeling, a bit. so that kind of weird nostalgia from that, I think. Sweet dreams. How do you mean? I don't remember dreaming or anything. One minute I'm in the Milky Way getting ready to sleep, and the next, you're two million light years away. No joke. 
We really flew that far? We really did. Welcome to Andromeda. So did we have to go through dark space to get here? Like, did we have to, like, quietly sail past the Reapers or something? All right. We've got a pod that was damaged when we lost gravity. You'll probably want to send something over. Look at this place, man. It's huge. The animations feel really not quite nice. Okay, a message from Captain Dunn. Attention Hyperion personnel. After a 600 year voyage, the good news is we're exactly where we're supposed to be. We've arrived in the Helios Cluster, Andromeda Galaxy, year 2819. <laughs> I mean, that's mad, isn't it, man? But I suppose... You know, we've, there's 600 years with no technological improvements and all that stuff, so we're kind of we're in the future, but we're also in the past, right? All stasis medical personnel should report for duty immediately. Give the Pathfinder mission team revival priority and prep its members for field reconnaissance. Reports of an unusual celestial phenomenon in the cluster are being investigated. Updates to follow, Captain Dunn. Celestial, it's Dark Bramble, man. We're in the Harthian galaxy, Harthian uh, system. Costa. Did the world just turn upside down, or am I still dreaming? Oh, he's the guy who waved at us. Let me take a look. In that pseudo flirty way. Hey there. Hell of a wake up call, huh? Didn't expect that first thing out of stasis. Makes two of us. Hang in there. Enjoy your nap, Ryder. I don't think I'll need sleep for the rest of my life. Yeah. Maybe another decade or two wouldn't have hurt. <laughs> right. Talk to you later. I recognize his voice. Okay, a message from Jen Garson. Hello, traveler, and welcome to your first day in Andromeda. This is the dawn of a new era for all of us. As you recover from stasis, know that you're in good hands. In a few short hours, you'll be leaving the Hyperion and joining thousands of your fellow colonists as you chase your fortunes and build the new life you've always dreamed about. It's been a long wait, but I promise you it'll be worth it. Jean Carson, our founder, that, the woman who we heard the recording of before. Fisher. Here comes the bombardment of information, man. Morning, Ryder. Or, Harper. or afternoon. Or I don't know. Kirkland. Good to see you, Ryder. Hmm. Uh, sorry, still waiting for some coffee. Yeah. Ah, uh, all of us. Now everyone's got Shepherd's haircut. Okay, so we can't we can't play Mass Effect. Without um, jumping into the codex, right? We've got a codex. <laughs> okay, let's just quickly check the journal. Meet your father, the Pathfinder, on Hyperion's. Oh, I thought I was the Pathfinder at first. I think for just because I didn't hear the first name. It was optional to check on your brother. Jeez. Okay, the codex, right? So, the initiative was built by the efforts of thousands who devoted years of time and countless resources to reach the Andromeda Galaxy. These are the people, places, and organizations that make the Pathfinder's mission possible. Known associates. Oh god, look at all this. There's, there's no narrator, thankfully. <laughs> you got me. Right. Officially designated as a simulated adaptive matrix, SAM, 
I'm an artificial intelligence that acts as a coordinating element between Pathfinder, Alec Ryder, and the rest of the team, of his team. My quantum processing power is used to conduct on-the-spot scans of alien worlds, assist in scientific study or tactical situations, and monitor the team's weapons and equipment. I'm physically located on Arc Hyperion, in secure server banks collectively known as SAMNode. While my primary connection is to Alex Ryder via a neural implant, okay, that's dangerous, I effectively serve as a mission computer for all team members during Pathfinder operations. I also collate, uh, collate and analyze data from numerous sources and compile it for later study. I'm tasked with authorizing and updating the Pathfinder team codex based on available information and discoveries as they're made. Okay, you've got, uh, you've got some big shoes to fill there, Sammy. Sammy boy. ED, uh, big shoes to fill. I'm already comparing it. What am I doing? Okay, this is our brother, Scott Ryder. Uh, Sam seemed nice, though. Um, I don't know. It's it's that, that bit there where it says he's connected to... with the neural implant connected to our father. That's That seems pretty dangerous, right? But I don't know if he's a true AI. But he, he calls himself an AI, so... He must be, have some kind of... Sentience, or, well, sapience, I guess, not sentience. Okay, Scott Ryder, born your younger twin on the Citadel space station in 2163. Scott grew up knowing the station was a gateway to the entire Milky Way. In his orientation interviews, he claims this fostered a longing to step through those gateways to adventure. With informal trading aided by Alec Ryder's N7 background, Scott joined the Systems Alliance military and was assigned to an outpost near Arcturus Station, overseeing Relay 202. A primary route to Arcturus, this mass relay leads to in, into contested space and has an unsavory reputation. Scott was needed to protect Arcturus, but also had a front row seat to everyone else going off to f fortune and glory. When Alec Ryder was dishonorably discharged due to his AI research... Oh, okay. Internal memos show that this also effectively ended Scott's career, making Andromeda a more attractive option for the adventure he sought. On arrival in Andromeda, Scott's cryopod was damaged and his revival process interrupted by, Doxy Le by Dr. Lexi Tapero advised... <laughs> was interrupted. Dr. Lexi Tapero advised keeping him in a medically induced coma to allow him to awaken naturally. Okay, so I guess this isn't like an alliance thing then. I guess this is like a private business thing. The Initiative. History, organization, and persons of note in the Andromeda Initiative. Oh my god. I think we should get some base stuff down because otherwise I think certain things are going to go over our head, although they might uh, re-emphasize some of this information. But Okay, uh, the Andromeda Initiative. Brainchild of the visionary, vision, visionary billionaire Gene Car Garson. The Andromeda Initiative was conceived as Garson's personal dream and a desire to prove humanity's capabilities beyond the military power demonstrated in the First Contact War. Garson officially began planning the initiative in 2172, announcing her ambitious goal of launching a pioneering colonization effort to Andromeda within 20 years. Internal reports show the struggles that the early initiative faced, however, Gene Garson's personal stake and enthusiasm sustained the initiative until the early 2180s when, after a sudden influx of investment and a new marketing stra strategy, interest in the initiative grew afresh. Construction of the arcs was completed rapidly thereafter and the Andromeda Initiative officially launched in 2185. Who funded it then? Oh, I'm, getting, I'm, getting, I'm getting Cerberus vibes. Uh, the initiative's mission statement is to bridge Andromeda and the Milky Way. Create a, oh, bridge them, really? Create a sustainable, inclusive civilization and push scientific development forwards by centuries. In official literature, Gene Garson characterizes the initiative as continuing the search for humanity's next horizon. So I don't think she's here, though. Right? A glossary of terms. Uh, ammunition block. A solid block of metal loaded into a gun. Sand-sized particles are sheared off by the gun's targeting mechanism then fired as projectiles, allowing a single block to give ammunition for multiple combat encounters. Citadel, yep. A massive alien space station in the Milky Way that acted as a political and cultural centre of the galaxy. It's, ma it's mad that they've gone here without knowing about the war with the Reapers, you know? It's kind of cool. It's just... Yeah. 
a convoy, yeah, commu a communications boy that relays data through corridors of mass free space. Extra net, yeah, yeah, yeah. A hard suit, an exploration slash combat suit, usually armored with titanium or ceramic plating and equipped with kinetic barriers to protect against hostile fire and environmental hazards. Heat sink, also known as a thermal clip, a detachable coolant. Yeah, 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 we know some of these. Faster than light travel. Flash forging, immediate manufacture of a usually short-lived object from raw materials using an Omni tool or other fabrication device. Omni blades are typically flash forged. Kinetic barrier, mass accelerator, mass relay, medigel, manufacturing. Omnigel, Medigel, optical storage disk, and quantum entanglement communication, instantaneous communication using two particles that are linked at a quantum level. Okay. Okay, Gene Garson. Founder of the Andromeda Initiative, Garson was one of humanity's wealthiest and most eccentric entrepreneurs in the Milky Way. Her business interests were wide ranging as she made her fortune from investments in a myriad technology related fields always a maverick it was her vision of, tra of traveling to a new galaxy that set the andromeda initiative in motion ignoring skeptics and naysayers garson spent vast sums of money building or acquiring the necessary technology and ships to make the voyage possible it was a private venture entirely funded by garson so as to remain free from any government oversight okay both good and bad right you need some oversight i feel but you also need some freedom so in 2185, Garson began the long journey to Andromeda aboard the support hub, Nexus. I'm, I, the commas are blurring into the full stops, I'm sorry. In 2185, Garson began the long journey to Andromeda aboard the support hub, Nexus. In a speech given on the eve of departure, she remarked on the collective knowledge and history represented by the arcs. We carry all these things like the honed tools of an artist to our great empty canvas. To Andromeda, we go to paint our masterpiece. Garson is slated to serve as the overall leader of the initiative upon arrival. All right, so the Nexus is a separate ship, I guess. The launch. Intergalactic travel was the topic of extranet discussion in the Milky Way for centuries. Several Asari or Solarian-led expeditions were proposed over the years, but petered out due to lack of interest, insufficient funds, or engineering hurdles. The Andromeda Initiative's use of AI, like myself, allowed many of the technical problems to be solved, but invited disapproval from the Turian hierarchy and the Systems Alliance. Building a fleet of dreadnought-sized arcs with private funding required delicate negotiations with the Citadel Council, and the advanced technology essential to survive in Andromeda was often acquired by unorthodox means. Official initiative records show the Nexus departed first in 2185, escorted by a small squadron of fighters for protection followed by four arcs that com comprised the initial launch wave. Additional vessels were in development, including a quarian-led ship accommodating multiple species. All right. But construction was slow due to their diverse requirements, and the second launch wave was delayed. Initial observers remain optimistic. Okay, so maybe there's more people coming. We don't really know. Details on the missions and personnel files of all initiative pathfinders. Okay, I'm going to read this and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on and we'll, we'll get to the other stuff as we go through. Role of a pathfinder. Pathfinders are the tip of the spear for exploring new worlds, while planetary surveying is, a tip, is typically a long-term, multiple-team process. The initiative found an alternative. Thanks to Alec Ryder's AI research, an individual equipped equipped with the best training and technology available, and an AI partner that can run complex studies in seconds and 100 test simulations a minute. With AI support, pathfinders can determine within hours whether a planet is suitable for habitation and direct the nexus as to what colonist, blo colonist block stands the best chance there. Pathfinders are trained to improve the viability of potential planets, initiate first contact with unknown species, find suitable outpost sites, and handle any ex external threats before the first colonist touches soil. The presence of a pathfinder is a reassurance that a planet can be settled safely and with a high expectation of success. Okay, we've got lots to read. I'm not looking forward to reading the ships and vehicles one. <laughs> I'm looking forward to being a biotic. Lens flare. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, whatever your name is. Kara. Cora. Coral. I'm 
That's gonna blow, dude. Oh. Ryder could find it. She has a scanner. Quick, Ryder, use it to locate the vault. What? On it. I'll try to get readings on the second conduit. Hey, well, I'll try to run a diagnostic. I'll override the safety. Got it. We don't have much time. We can use all right. Hurry, Ryder. There's no indication of a fault in this component. Keep looking. Power surge is getting worse. I'm trying to spin up the compensator. Uh, uh oh. Get the circuit has to be here. Relay 2C shows damage from a temperature spike. Found it. Bad relay. Ryder, can you go reset it? Uh, sure. There. It's reset. I'm a biotic, not an engineer anymore. Cora, okay. Man, look at it. All right, Cora, let's go. See, she's got like a, a custom haircut, man. That was close. Barely an Andromeda, and we're already scrambling. Yep. The adventure begins. We're I'm human after all. Dad will see it that way. Go ahead and take us to the bridge. Gosh, it's got like a whole train network in here. What's he gonna look like, man? Helm control, report. We're drifting. Flight controls aren't responding. First priority is stopping these outages. Mainline power's been knocked out. We're on reserves, Captain. They won't last. What's our position? Unknown. We lost telemetry. Sam, oh, we need eyes out there. Attempting to adjust to sensor array. Alec, please. You may be Pathfinder, but this is my ship. Captain, the protocol's clear. In the absence of communication with the Nexus or the other Arcs, we proceed to our appointed Golden World. Solid ground. If it's even out there. Nobody said anything about running into an energy cloud. And that's just a wild guess what we hit. Alec, I need to assess the damage. Stop the bleeding. We've got 20,000 people asleep on this ship. Let's give them a chance to wake up. Can you blame her? Yeah, I mean, it's her call, I think. She is the captain. I think she gets the final word. Well, he might. This isn't about having the final word. Yes, sir. We're coming through. Okay, you look mad. My God. Is, is that, that the planet? The world? That's Habitat 7. New Earth, if we're lucky. No, I don't think so, mate. All of our long-range scans told us it was in the green zone. Perfect for human settlement. Well, it is, but this stuff is obviously not... It doesn't even look the same. Yeah, look, I... Pardon my French, but I think it's fucked. 
She's right. It looks pretty dicey from here. Are we sure about those scans? It's a good question. Things can change. It's been 600 years. Sam. The energy from the phenomenon is dumping our senses. Planetary conditions are unknown. We're marooned. 20,000 souls adrift at sea. And when the power runs out and stays out, we need to know if that's safe harbor. And if it's not. It's not. As Pathfinder, it'll be my job to find an alternative. It's what we trained for. But if this goes well, we are already home. Dude, can you not see the apocalypse that's right. surrounding Just the planet? Make it quick. Harper, the rest of the team should be awake by now. Have them spin up two shuttles. Planet Fallen 30. Yes, sir. Ah. A stubborn one, isn't he? Ah. Okay, she's being casual. Let's try and match. I don't know. That's not casual. That's uh, whatever the whatever it was called. Yeah, two peas in a pod, I guess. Stubborn runs in the family. Guess I rubbed off on him. Just as long as he knows what he's doing. It's not like the cavalry's coming to save the day. Yeah, good point. I need an ETA on our sensor repairs. We're blind out here. I mean, that looks like a kind of, like, world consumption thing, right? So it looks like something that's going to hate that he missed this. consuming Are the planet. Are all adrenaline junkies? I guess it's in our blood. I was born a minute ahead of him. I never let him forget it. Don't worry. I'm sure Scott will pull through. Yeah, and when he does, he'll want to hear stories. So, let's get out there and find him one. Right, you'll want to get your helmet. And maybe stop at the good luck rock before we go. The what? It's an old superstition of your dad's. The good luck rock. Okay, a team field manual introduction. As a member of the Pathfinder team, you'll, you play a critical role in the Andromeda Initiative's efforts to establish a foothold in the new galaxy. The team faces many challenges. Golden World site verification, reconnaissance and mapping of unknown territories, planetary and celestial, scientific analysis and discovery of new phenomenon, science, um, potential first contact with extraterrestrials. God, yeah, I mean, new rate? Are we going to run into new races? Is this galaxy even inhabited? I don't really know anything about Andromeda in terms of, you know, what kind of actual science there is known about Andromeda, because it is a real galaxy, right? Establishing uh, diplomatic relations with local inhabitants, general support of settlement outposts. So, <laughs> are we going to have, like, someone even better than the Asari? I mean, we'll see. Yeah, I like the quality of animations. Okay, Pathfinder Team Field Manual, First Contact Protocol. In the event of any member of the Pathfinder team encounters intelligent alien life, it's imperative that first contact protocols be strictly observed. The Andromeda Initiative holds the principles of peace and cooperation amongst our highest ideals. Aggressive actions against extraterrestrials is only permitted when hostile intent is clearly demonstrated and Pathfinder team members are at obvious risk of injury or death. Classic med kit. Uh, I did. I think I turned helmets off. But... Got it. That should do it. The Pathfinder is now requiring sidearms. I've opened the armaments locker. Are we expecting trouble, Sam? A precaution. Please arm yourself, Ryder. Hey, Ryder. Chaps. It's Kirkland, right? Yeah. I think we met just before the Hyperion left Earth. Not sure if you know Greer. Hi there. 
Your dad say anything about what's going on? Um. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sensors are scrambled, so we're going in kind of blind. Tough to say. Sensors can't get a read on the planet. Well, at least it keeps things interesting. Yeah, you're ashamed to go through all this training and not put it to good use. Uh, really? See you guys on the ride down. Cowboys. You're all gonna die. <laughs> oh, it's music. Sorry. Fisher. Ryder? Hey Fisher, how's it going? I heard a rumor from the bridge that your dad and the captain aren't seeing eye to eye on this. Harper and Ryder, to the hangar. Uh, don't believe rumors, mate. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> okay then. I'll just pretend I didn't hear that you took Gunn's side. More rumors. Maybe, but... I figure at the end of the day, the Pathfinder team answers to the Pathfinder. Besides, your dad's the N7 here. He's got the best aim. I go wherever he goes. Yeah, I'm getting the sense that uh, Pops is, is going to snuff it here. I mean, we've got to end up being the most important thing, right? <laughs> Scott's locker? Okay. Looks like dad's already suited up. Let's get our weapons. Oh, hang on. Water cooler? That or not. No bathroom breaks on this trip. Oh. Alright. Better safe than sorry. A pistol? Just another boring day at the office, huh? Settle teams. Rep for departure. Okay. Can't wait to do this one. Hadn't noticed. Casual. We can handle it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Complicated one, though. I didn't expect everything to go wrong quite this fast. It's a good test to see what we're made of. I always wondered what it was like when explorers crossed the ocean. Nothing but stars and dead reckoning to guide them. And a map that said, here be dragons. <laughs> well, if they made it, we can too. And maybe see a dragon along the way. Yeah, let's not get eaten. I'd prefer to eat lunch, not be lunch. You're not a real explorer till you've got some scars. Or bite marks. Got everyone. On that note, time to get to the shuttle. My everyone sounds like Jenkins. This is not good. Want to see some action? I want to put my train into the test. We I need some scars. Right. Everything was in the clear. How could things change like that? It's just been six hundred years. All right. Everyone's gonna die. <laughs> Dr. Carlyle, with everything going on, I think the Ark needs you more than we do. Pathfinder wants a medic on hand, and if that is home down there, I'm happy to knock on the door. Yeah, this might get a bit, uh, might get a bit spicy down there, Doctor. Yeah, we're just not sure what's on the other side of the door. No problem. If it has teeth, I brought the pliers. Yank them out myself. All right, team. Button it up. We leave in five. Sir, we broke out the weapons as requested. Anything we should know about? Seem prudent, given the situation. We'll be down a man with Scott out. I heard what happened. Your brother's strong. He'll make it. Yeah, you better. You better. 600 year nap and he oversleeps. You know him. Never was an early riser. Just don't let it get to you. I need you sharp. Yes, sir. Your mom would have been proud. 
both of you. Okay, team, listen up. He's got the N7 armor on. I chose each of you for the Pathfinder team, not just because you're talented and passionate, but because you're dreamers, like me. We dream of exploring the unknown, of finding the edge of the map, and then <laughs> discovering what lies beyond. When people look back on this, and they will, they'll remember we didn't give up, that we kept dreaming that our first few faltering steps in Andromeda were the beginning of everything they know. We only get one chance to be first. So, let's go make history. Yes, sir. We got a Mako. Six hundred years for this. All right, Jenkins, calm down. Everyone's Jenkins. to be an unstable mass of dark energy. If you say so, steer clear of it. Get some chop here. Gravity anomaly is detected. What? I can even it out. My stomach would appreciate that. The Bramble We're Man. Clear. To cruising speed. The Bramble well, over takes over we everything. Have a chance to be back in the Milky Way. Name's Liam Costa. Security and response specialist. Good to meet you, Liam. Hard to believe we're finally doing this. Sure beats reading the brochures. We're getting our deceleration. Planet's dead ahead. Oh, man. Wasteland, dude. Is this the right planet? We had this all worked out. Keep it tight, Shuttle 2. Uh, the mountains are floating. Oh, God. Yeah, gra gra gravitational anomalies. That has to be advanced engineering. Hyperion, this is the Pathfinder. We've got evidence of an alien civilization. Oh. Has anyone seen us? What if they're not friendly? We stick to contact protocol. No use of deadly force unless hostile intent is clear. Yeah, seat belts, please. Yeah. Just... Oh, yeah, we're done as well. Acceleration increasing. No kidding! Your jump jet is malfunctioning. Get it working! Approaching terminal velocity. Too. 
Uh, who well, uh, it's not the time for for jokes, I guess. Any survivors? Did the others make it? I don't know. It was all a blur. Shuttle split in two. This is like some nightmare. Yeah. No way this is home. Looks like we're gonna find some high ground. See if anyone else is alive. Come on. Uh, hang on, I'm just gonna stare at this for a bit. Rider. How's your survival training? I've seen my share of troubles. Nothing crazy, but... Well, crazy just found us. Those rocks out there Ooh. are floating. Terra incognita. Some of these plants look like tentacles. Is the water here even water? I think it used to be. We've got like a solid jump. It doesn't feel. Those structures too... we saw on the way in. Who could survive in a place like this? Not sure we want to find out. All oh, right, we've not got like a mini map. I appreciate that. So we've got like a compass style uh, map at the top, like like a, a Skyrim kind of thing. Storms here don't seem natural. Oh, the the plants. Well, without Sam, it's hard to say exactly what this is. It's sort of a plant, and maybe dead, but maybe not. Data, 67 probability, 67% probability of plant life. Photosynthetically inefficient. We should get on with it. Possibly carnivorous. High variance in cellular mutation detected, unknown type. <laughs> Scanning unknown tech. And life forms any research data points. Spend RD at a research center to unlock new weapons and armor. Hanging around here isn't helping. Let's go, Ryder. Shush. Quiet boy. Dude, look at this. Mein Gott. There's a comm device. Standard Andromeda initiative model. No fixing this. It must have broken on impact. Explains why we lost our sampling. Oh, and safety tip? Don't breathe the air. Found that out the hard way. Got it. Mushrooms. Multicellular fungal life form. Bioluminescence enzyme detected. High variance in cellular, cellular mutation detected. I didn't expect this. I know. You, I, I seem to remember you guys told me that the game was good graphically, but I wasn't expecting it to be kind of this. That to take me back this much. I suppose this did come out, what, five years after Mass Effect 3, so... You think that energy cloud we saw could cause all this? Sam said it's dark energy, but that's in space. Yeah, hell of a cloud. A cloud that makes boulders float. I imagine we're going to have a combat tutorial at some point, right? So these kind of look like. Uh, under what the hell is this? Come on, we gotta get through it. This is crazy. Welcome to Habitat Seven. Keep moving. Ah! Did you all right? Damn it! Shit, that hurt. Looks safer under there. Is this for real? What the hell is going on with this place? Planet's trying to murder us. Standard, right? Like Tachanka. Look, 
Look. What in the... Something flying around in the sky. Oh, wow. Here be dragons. <laughs> Cora will love it. Fuel cell, okay. There! We get up that cliff, we find high ground. Come on! Not sure we want to be the tallest thing around here. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, this is ammo. Okay. I think I can see a path up. We'll use the jump jets if we have to. Into the breach! I think I'd rather fall than get hit by lightning. Give it a minute. We can probably do both. See ya. <sighs> More glowing mushrooms. Are they making that noise? No. Coming from inside the mountain. Crisis response. Yeah? Tell you over a beer sometime. Yeah, alright, chill out, buddy. Alright. This is going to be close. That's it. We're getting there. Come on, dude. I like watching NPCs do stuff. Hold space as you jump to a ledge. Okay. Okay. Mind making some room? Thanks. What the hell is that? Yeah, mystery. Don't know, but it's our job to figure it out. That sounds like your old man talking. He was right. Something went wrong here. Mm. We have to find out what. One thing at a time. Maybe an experiment gone what? wrong. It's Fisher. Wait. Look. Look at what? Who the, the hell is that? Captain Rockbody, what's going on? Holy oh, shit! What was first contact protocol again? No Shoot them. Force unless fired upon. Yeah, said no one in the field ever. How do we handle it? <sighs> this lad's gonna die if we don't do something here, man. He might die if we do something, though. And they weren't going to shoot. But man, we've encountered our first evil bald guys. You know, they've got rock heads. So... I don't know, dude. These are clearly bad guys. But if we shoot first, then maybe we make things worse. Take it easy. We only get one shot at hello with these guys. Yeah. Yeah. And Fisher gets shot in the head if we're wrong. Yeah, but they might shoot him in the head if we shoot at the... Nice and easy. We only go hot if we have to. Don't think they've spotted us yet. Rockmen! Oh, shit! Nyan, shoot it! He sees us! We can't understand you! We're not here to fight! That man's with us! Nyan, shoot it! 
Doesn't sound friendly. What's the other? May I do it? Sticky cover, okay. And I'm dead! Nice and easy. We only go hot if we have to. Okay. Don't think they've spotted us yet. I need to get used to... He sees us! We can't understand you! We're not here to fight! That man's with us! Can you help? Doesn't sound friendly. What's the other guy doing? I don't... Crap. Fisher. Okay. It's over. Fisher, you okay? Uh, so much for making peace with the locals. Yeah. Thanks for jumping in. Yeah, they didn't give us much choice. We tried talking. I guess they didn't want to listen. What else could we do? You saved my life. Yeah, at least we know it's what. The brochures were light on aliens who want to shoot your head off. <sighs> we still don't even know what they wanted. The way they treated you? Blood samples, I'd say. Lots of them. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are like potentially seen as the invaders here, though. We have to remember that. Who says we'd even understand, or they'd understand us? It's a new galaxy. I guess it's too much to expect they'll play by Milky Way rules. They broke the rules in any galaxy. But why go after us like that? Only thing I know for sure: their guns hit just as hard as ours. Where are the others? Gone. Kirkland and Greer went looking for help. Come on. Ah, my leg. Oh. All right, Jenkins. You know, I think it's broken. You guys push ahead and look for the others. You sure? Yeah. Nice. Just find us a ride out of here. Yeah, he, he's dead. Take a few more of them out while you're at it. <laughs> 